Okay folks, well, I've just got back from Hong Kong recently. I've been travelling a lot in the last six months uh, around the world to film culinary life and to bring all these amazing people to you. But I'm just in my studio at the moment and I thought that I would uh, put some more work together but take you through a process that's really quite lengthy and quite complicated uh, to the extent that um, these pieces, and this is just the start of it, are going to be uh, some images that I'm going to be creating more of in the next probably 12 months or so. And um, uh, yeah, literally building on all of the things that I've learned over the last, you know, nine years in a sense, traveling around the world and visiting everybody, but injecting some of my own ideas and work into it as well. And what I've got here at the moment is I've got some cardboard that I've actually traced. And if you can sort of see this image right here, I've actually taken that area there and this is going to be one of the characters it's going to be horses three horses i'm going to be painting and, and putting all together and there's going to be different materials and different structures and the whole thing it's going to be quite a complex piece to do um, but uh, i'll bring you along with me but in the proviso of this i've actually just taken this cardboard and i've used this uh, carbon paper here and i've gone over the cardboard you can sort of you can sort of see there there's a bit of a line that you can get and um, all I'm doing at the moment is uh, I'm, I've cut all of these up. I mean, it was a, sort of a fairly large piece in the, in the first place to start with, but I'm cutting them up and I'm actually just going around with this pair of scissors because uh, you don't want the cardboard to be too thick on this thing. And a lot of this is going to be gold lift. And all I'm doing is making sure those scissors are nice and wide. And I'm literally cutting my way all around these particular pieces here that I have uh, literally gone over on this blank here and I'm going to do that for all of the characters in there and then uh, I've got some other uh, polymer clays that I'm using to to make various objects like buttons and so as I said it's going to be quite complex but I'm going to cut all of these out um, and it's going to take me quite a while to do and once I've done that we come back and look at some other things I'm going to be using inks oils acrylics uh, gold leaf uh, acrylic compounds but uh, yeah, come along and, and see how this turns out. It's going to be a pretty fascinating journey for you, so stay tuned. Okay, folks. Now, what I'm actually doing with this um, is I've actually squeezed a whole bunch of gold paint into the um, this little uh, dispenser, I suppose you could call it. And as you can see, I've actually gold leafed these guys. So I'm just preparing some more on. These are just the chest panels of the particular horses that I'm actually going to be doing for this uh, for this section. It's going to be quite a complex piece. I've got bits and pieces of stuff everywhere. It's sort of just as much craft as it is art. But what I'm doing with this is I'm squeezing the paint out of like so around, and I'm just letting the gold build up on the edges and there'll be lots of varying colours all through this particular piece and then just going around like so and then in the inside here once it's dry I'll actually cover this with um, gold size all I'm doing is just creating some images inside this. All around. So I'll put some and as you can see, uh, just a couple little sections in here section in here and I've got even smaller tubes of this the mean tiny tiny little ones that you can squeeze out and they it's almost like a spider's web when it comes out which I'll be using later on but that pretty much gives me my pattern underneath as you can see and you can have a look at that and then the, the, what happens there is that this is the end result of that there so basically it's 
cardboard. Once it's sealed with the two pack, the acrylic two pack, it'll, it'll never come up again. It should it'll, it'll be there for three, four hundred years once it's done, but that gives you an idea of where we're going with it. Okay, well you probably hear a little bit of grinding in the background. We're actually having one of the bathrooms be done up, so one of my oldest sons down here with some of his cohorts. He's a brilliant builder and he's doing that. But getting back to this, as I said, we've been working out all of the, the gold stuff. You can actually see on this where I've cut these patterns out. There's some stuff that I want to build up. I want to turn these mains into a long flowing section all gold underneath but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put down all of the underlining drawing and I've got three horses to go along this and then I'm going to put inks all over this I'm going to lay it flat cover it with some water just lightly and then pour some inks on and just let the inks dry plus some other paint as well just to build up a base underneath it but all I'm doing now is going around the outside of this I've marked these off I mean I sort of cut these up, trim them down. This section here is some beads, some baubles that go on the top there, so I'm going to um, probably just go around them for the time being, so I know where they are, but I'll paint those in later on. And using a lot of imagination, of course, which is what it's all about. Uh, the eye is just in there, like so, reflection, and you should be able to see underneath this, is this starting to come out all the way through there. So I'm going to go over that whole thing, put the other horses in, and then come back, and then I'll show you how I pour the inks on. I'm using inks and some acrylic uh, directly out of the tube to build up that uh, that layer underneath it and we'll go from there. Okay guys, well, what I've done is I've actually sketched this whole thing out using the carbon paper as you can see with what we were doing before and I've actually used some other templates to put down some surfaces but um, there are actually wheels and cogs but I thought of an idea for this thing called um, precise precision uh, for the picture. So I'm actually just putting water down there over the whole thing and I've got all of my inks set out and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the inks and I'm going to start to splatter them around. And even the reds. a lot of this stuff will disappear underneath and I've got some more yellows here see so it's sort of drifting to the other areas some purples I don't want to keep it too dark I think I'll probably the more yellows I can put in there the better. And these are just all inks. I love the inks. Got some golds here as well. You can see how it's starting to mix in with each other. I mean that, that top section there is going to be all gold leaf, but I want to try and keep it as light as I can. I want those yellows in there because there's going to be a lot of darks that come into it. Putting the reds in there. And some of these greens. Not too much. Too carried away. It's, it's a bit too much. So just bits and pieces. You see it's starting to run and the pattern's coming out in between. It looks pretty cool. Just a little bit of blue. Too much, yeah, you don't want to get too carried away. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just free with golds all across the top here and just squeezing them out because the end result is that I'm going to be working over the top of all of this anyway. And the 
whites. Look at those patterns coming out there, that looks amazing. As I said, it's just a background, but I love the fact that those, uh, those patterns are just coming out like they are, that's amazing. Loving that, just loving it. So I've actually put down some um, uh, modeling compound and I used a template that I had bought, which is a template of cogs. And I've gone over the whole thing with that. And this top section at the top there is going to be all gold leaf. But I just wanted that run of colours in there and it's just come out really quite well. It's always a little different when it starts to dry admittedly, but look at that there. That looks amazing. Just love that. Just amazing. So, I'll wait till that dries and then I'll get on to the next section after that. Okay, well as you can see I've moved a little bit more ahead. And I've actually, uh, as you can see, it's sort of bring up bright colours. This looks fantastic in here. I'll get some close-ups of that later on. But this, uh, this uh, moulding paste that I put over the templates has come up really, really well. And I've actually started painting this area here in, it's a black primer. And just putting a couple of layers of that down. Now, the secret to this is it's pretty cool is that there's a, a product called Langridge Vertigray Base. And this actually puts a patina. So, you can just see that there, that actually puts a patina in the black areas and that's what I'm going to do, I'm putting the black primer down and then what you do is you use the oxidising patina, that's it right there, and you actually paint that over the areas that you actually want to get a patina effect and it looks like copper, it looks like um, stained copper once it's finished so I wanted that background to be like that and then I'm going to layer other things on top of that but all I'm doing at the moment is painting the areas that I want in black just a little bit to the to the back here, just to go there, and then this section here, nice solid layer so that the uh, the patina can shine through. And then what I'll do is I'll lay it flat, and then I'll put the oxidising patina over the top of the areas that I want, and then you just drop the uh, the verdigris base on top of that, uh, and it comes up a really amazing patina. So, but we'll we'll watch those as I go through. But I'm going to finish this off. I've gone over and re-sketched. My characters on top here, as I said, there's a lot that I'm going to do. I've got beads and three-dimensional um, uh, characters and I'm using dats and polymers that I'm building for all of the tassels, uh, all of the stuff. They're quite amazing looking horses. They're Arab horses, but what I've done is I've just taken the riders away and just processed the whole thing so that there's just the three horses there. But it'll look pretty spectacular, I think. I'm, I'm quite sort of pleased with where it's going. I love the reds and yellows. All these rainbow colours are fantastic. A lot of that will disappear once I start working on the top. But as I said, it's a real three-dimensional effect, so I think you're going to enjoy it. But let me get back to the black, and then we'll do the patina. Okay, for this part of our picture, um, as you can see, I've got... I've started to put down... squeezing out of this little guy here, all of these lines and bit by bit I'm just sort of making the shapes of those uh, manes they're called and just squeezing just a little bit by a little bit as I go along once I've actually got this done I will put gold size all over the top I'll actually do the patina beforehand because this is sort of one of those stages that you've got to do as you go along. And um, just make it easier. And I've got to put the gold leaf down first because I'm using oils to do a lot of the dark highlights. And if you put the gold leaf down, once the oil's down, the gold leaf will stick to the oil and you will end up with an absolute nightmare. So anything that's gold leaf that hasn't been already prepared on another surface has to go down first and then you have to work around it. Just those little tricks of the trade. As well I've just uh, put the gold size on the um, on the picture at the back and what I've got to do now is I'm going to put the, the third eight patina I'm going to I've already put the black down the black base I'm just going to go over the whole thing with this patina, just shake it up well, and you can see the see the, the metallic properties in it already. So I'm going to put.
put all of that down. And then later on I'm going to get the uh, patina solution and go over the whole thing. But I'm just going to gently paint that in. It sort of, it's got a little bit of a copper, bronzy copper colour to it. I'm just going to apply the whole thing over the whole lot. And then from there, I'll put the patina solution on should oxidise certain areas and give a pretty cool effect. Like I said before, I'll be going over the top of this once again with um, uh, with some other some other materials as well, mostly gold, gold ribbon and gold leaf. If you just look at this area here, I actually put stuck that on last night. That just a little bit there just to see what it was like. That's almost three dimensional in there as well. Okay, for this section, all I'm actually just doing is taking the, the patina and just dropping it onto the oxidizing liquid and then just dropping it onto the board. And as this dries, it should. Give an effect. Okay, well as you can see, the patinas come up quite well, just sort of dripping the dripping the paint down there and um, all the way up. So there's some things I'm going to do there, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to work on this gold leaf. And you can see where the areas that I put in where the mains are. So I'm actually going to gold leaf that whole area all the way along and down the bottom there as well so we'll start on that and then after that I'm going to actually start painting in oils over the top of this uh, these are the different processes I've got to go through to get this right but all the gold leaves got to go down now anyway all right well as you can see I've made a bit of progress with the gold leaf I've just got stacks of the stuff over here you can buy it from um, Gold leaf gilding supplies in Sydney. Bridget, lovely lady, if you want to talk to her. But what I've done is I've put down the gold size over the tops of these. And now all I'm doing is placing the gold leaf on the top, like so. You can actually see the little ridges and where it actually sticks, where it's not sticking. And then I just work over those. Make sure your hands are reasonably clean of oil because you will stain the gold leaf if they're not. And this little piece here, they just get to the edge where it's not stuck. And I use that over this area here. You can just place it in there and tap it down again. Try not to have too much waste if we can. This stuff's not cheap. As you can see, just using that finger to push that gold leaf into those little areas. It's sort of funny enough, it does stretch a little bit in areas like that without, it, without breaking. It's a bit weird. You wouldn't think it would. And There, piece there. This is sort of a good part of the whole thing because it's fun. It's fun actually doing this, but it gives you an idea. And generally, what I can do is go like so. Once it gets to the edges, I just run the brush from side to side, like so, and you can just see those nice edges. That Come this is the reason that you can't be painting with oils. Oils are the last thing that I'm going to have to put on this picture because this stuff will stick to oil like you wouldn't believe and then that's it, you just have to start again. So there are different processes that, and, and schedules that you need to have in place before you do th something like this because if you don't, you'll be really sorry in the end. You'll do a lot of work for no reason at all. But can you see those edges now? 
where I've brought up that the whole size right to the edge and then it's nice and clean. I'm going to take this outside when I'm finished doing all of this so that I just don't make a mess of the studio and it can just float away in the wind. Pretty good stuff. Okay. Well, as you can see, I've, um, I'm going to put all of the gold down first. I've got all these panels that I've actually made and cut out and then shaped. Done all I need to do with them, gold leaf them, so there's a lot of work involved in it under any circumstances, but this one here actually fits in this spot right here. Looks quite spectacular. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of shine on it, of course, but and I need to get these as straight as I possibly can. And what I do then is I get my contact us contact cement and basically go over the whole thing right out to the edges. So lots of people make mistakes with this stuff, you've got to really get a good covering on everything. And I'm just squeezing it directly out of the tube. Like so. And this will all be covered, as I said, with the two-pack solution. So um, that curly two-pack will go into every little nook and cranny. It's a fair way off yet, I've still got a lot to do, but just I thought I'd put these down, which goes, just give me a better scope on where I'm actually going with everything. And then, without touching the gold too much, as you will soil it after a while, basically I'm just going to stick him down there, put that there like so. And you just got to continuously check the edges on these, just because it is. It is um, contact cement. It tends to lift, lift up a bit, but if you keep pushing it down, and this one here, once again, same situation. And I'll go over and I'll put the rest of those in. As you can see, it's starting to come together. All right, next stage is, I'm actually putting all of this ribbon down, and I've just got a little bit of it right here. And I'm just cutting sections of gold ribbon all the way around, and I'm using a contact cement to actually stick them up and then what I've done, I've cut the edges. I've made some small lines so that I can see where I'm going so I touch it to there. And there you go and I'm just going to go around the whole lot like that. But it's sort of as you look at it, you probably can't see it in the camera but as you look from side to side you can see the different reflections. And then obviously all of this is going to have to be redone again, just touching up certain areas. There'll be different um, beads of colour that I'm going to squeeze through. And then once I've done this, I'll actually start on this horse's face right here um, and start with the oils and then start to build that. So we'll put the realistic aspect into the picture as well.